This is a Nintendo Switch. I might have talked about this system a few times on the channel, but it's a system that I genuinely enjoy. I enjoy talking about it. I enjoy the different games that come out for it. I enjoy seeing all the ports that come out for the system. But there's another handheld system that's come out recently that people say, well, it makes the Nintendo Switch look like trash. And maybe it does. Maybe that is the case. Now, I haven't picked up one of these yet, but now I finally got my greasy mitts, and you can tell by the screen on this that my hands are indeed very greasy. The Steam Deck. Look at this behemoth of a system. Look at this massive monstrosity of a handheld system. So what do I think about this system? I've had it for a few days now. I've been playing around with it. I definitely have some things I absolutely love about it, and there's some things that I don't love about it. But is this going to replace my Nintendo Switch? Am I off the Nintendo Switch bandwagon, and am I moving to a Steam Deck only channel? I mean, no, but, you know, I guess I guess that's something, that's a, that's a storyline we could do for this video, right? Without any further ado, though, let's talk about the Steam Deck. So the first thing you notice about this system is just the sheer size of it, because it, it is quite a big system. I have a little video here comparing a Nintendo Switch OLED to the Steam Deck, and you could clearly see that the Steam Deck is a much larger system. Now, there are some interesting features on the Steam Deck that are not available on the Switch, but I want to talk sort of about the controls of the system first, and then we're going to talk about some of the games. Now, when you look at the controls of it, it's very spread out. And when I initially saw this, I thought, it doesn't look very comfortable. But once you actually get your hands on it, it's not entirely that bad. It is a very heavy system, though, so that is something you'll want to keep in mind with this, because if you got little weak puny arms or puny hands, you know, I got kind of tiny hands. Um, it does sort of take its toll on your hands as far as holding it is concerned. Now, I love the screen on it. I think the screen is very nice. We have a variety of buttons, touch pads, all sorts of stuff here. The fan is on the top, and that's something you'll become very quickly friends with because it's it's a loud fan, and it's pretty damn loud. But overall, I don't think it's a bad-looking system. Like I said, it is pretty big. It is pretty bulky, but it's really about the games on the system, and that's what I was really interested in. Of course, you have the Steam operating system on this, and you could do a lot with this system just beyond the steam store you can actually treat it like a mini handheld pc for the purpose of this video though i'm approaching this as someone just buying a steam deck to play games off of steam so please keep that in mind as i won't be getting too much into emulation at least in this video or anything like that so you have the steam store you can get all your games on there and stuff but i was interested in the performance of this and that's where this thing really starts to open up for me all right, so first off, we're going to check out Spider-Man running on the Steam Deck. Now, I played this game originally on my PlayStation 4. I never played the remastered edition on the PlayStation 5. I did play Miles Morales on the PlayStation 5. But this was a game that I thought, okay, you know, in terms of graphics, in terms of frame rate, in terms of capabilities that the Nintendo Switch can't do, I want to see how this game performs. Now, obviously, I'm having to film this off screen, so I don't think it looks quite as good as it does actually in person. But you get the gist of what's going on here and just try to avoid seeing my head pop up in the background we do what we can around here i was thoroughly impressed with this game though just how everything ran how everything looked and just how it played like it still feels like a magical game it's arguably one of the best if not the best superhero games of all time but it was definitely something that absolutely blew me away now what i also like about this is since we are playing the pc versions of these games you have a wealth of customization options you could do anything with this if you want to increase visual fidelity you want to decrease it for better uh performance of the games like you could do so much stuff with it and i feel like that's a benefit that really sticks out on this system because you can tailor suit your gameplay experience to your gameplay needs so spider-man like i said it's a fantastic game no matter how you play it but seeing this game run natively on a handheld was just a, a shocking experience and really sort of set the tone for my experience with the steam deck Next up, we're checking out Ultra Street Fighter 2 on the Steam Deck. Now, I chose this game because it uses the D-pad. I wanted to see what this D-pad was all about. That's kind of why the camera is sort of positioned on my thumb so that you can see how the D-pad works. Um, I will say the D-pad feels a bit soft. I would have liked a bit of a stiffer D-pad. I'm really not able to sort of get a good grip on it just because of the position that I'm playing on. But those things aside, the D-pad does feel good. You know, I play Street Fighter with a D-pad when I play it without a fight stick or something like that. I actually prefer to play with the D-pad. I'm a huge fan of Ultra Street Fighter 4. I loved playing this game on the 360 with my best friend when we had a townhouse. And you can see it's running phenomenally 
on the Steam Deck. It just looks so freaking good. It makes you wonder why they never ported this over to the Nintendo Switch because this, this is a great game. You know, it's a great game. It definitely is making me excited to play Street Fighter 6 whenever that comes out. So once again, another huge home run for the Steam Deck with this version of the game. The performance is beautiful. And I think the D-pad is, you know, suitable. It, 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 it's serviceable. It, it does the job. It does what I need it to do. And it allows me to play these games. Next up, we are checking out Project Cars 2. I like Project Cars 2 better than I like Project Cars 3 because I am a fan of racing games. I'm a fan of racing, and I'm a fan of fast cars. Now, this was an interesting game to me because of the way it uses the analog stick because, of course, this is a racing game, so you're constantly moving left to right and stuff like that. And that's one of the things I find interesting about the analog stick for the Steam Deck is it has a very wide reach, I've noticed. Maybe that's just because I'm accustomed to the Nintendo Switch and how, you know, playing that in handheld mode when I'm not using a grip or something like that, just playing it in handheld mode with the Joy-Con, the reach on these control sticks feels a lot further and that could be a good thing that could be a bad thing you know some of my cornering here was just horribly mistimed because you kind of got to get used to it but that is something i wanted to mention as far as the controls were concerned performance wise you could see like holy crap on a stick does this game still look phenomenal you know gran turismo could learn a lesson from project cars put the street courses back in the game these are some of the best courses to play there's so much fun and there's so much variety in the visuals of course this game has a wealth of camera options as well just another fantastic experience much like all the other games that are available on the steam deck when you're playing them because they are pc versions of the game there's tons of customization options you can do things for the environments to make them look prettier if you want to i'm just running on standard settings i did turn the attention to detail on the vehicles to high and i'm getting a fantastic experience with this i think this game looks great this game plays great and it's still a lot of fun to play so racing fans it's another great system to play video games on and let's check out our final game Well, 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 it's the game I wanted a Steam Deck for in the first place because Nate the Hate lied to me and I still don't have my Batman games on the Switch. And it's Batman Arkham City, a game that I absolutely adore. Another sort of pseudo open world style experience. Now, I did have a little issue running this game initially. We'll talk about it um, towards the end of the video. But once I got the game up and running, you could see it looks freaking great, dude. It's still, this is a game that definitely holds up well. I would say this is right up there with Spider-Man as far as great games are concerned. I know people like Arkham Asylum better. I know people like Arkham City or Arkham Knight better. I don't like Arkham Knight all that much. I don't like the Batmobile in the game. But this is yet another game that just looks and plays phenomenally on this system. Of course, since we're playing on Steam, the game is like a few dollars right now. Like there's so many Steam sales that happen constantly on the platform that you could constantly get games at cheap prices, which is something that I absolutely adore because I'm a cheap person. But yes, Batman, Arkham City running flawlessly on this system once I got it up and running, though. So let's talk about some of the negative points of the system because, you know, I've been pretty positive thus far. But there are a few things that I do want to mention when it comes to the Steam Deck. All right, so I've been pretty positive about the Steam Deck thus far, but what don't I like about it? What are some of the drawbacks? Um, There are definitely a few that I want to cover. First off is the ergonomics of the system, the design of the system itself, because it is a big, clunky, bulky son of a bitch. Like, there's no way around it. And this is supposed to be a portable system. And as a portable system, it doesn't seem like something that you can easily take around with you. Like, yeah, you can get cases and stuff for it, but I feel like you'll need more than just a case because of the size of the system, but also leading us into our next point the battery life on this system sucks like it is not good the battery life is not good it drains very fast and yes it's more pronounced on some games and other games but you know whereas the nintendo switch like yes some games will drain the battery faster than other games it's way more pronounced on this like you play a game like spider-man running at pretty optimal settings for the steam deck and you increase that brightness your system is going to die in a very short manner of time now yes you could buy a battery pack to go along with your system but that kind of negates the whole portability aspect of the system i feel it's still a handheld because playing it at home in the confines of my couch with it plugged in or something like that getting a constant power charge it's fantastic when i'm watching a knicks game i think my third though um sort of complaint about the system is the optimization of it and that's something that's going to get better over time but there have been games that i've tried to play on the system that just didn't work all 
all that great and you have to go in and mess around with settings and stuff like that with nights i have nights into dreams which is a steam release i had to go in and adjust a whole bunch of settings in order just to get it to run on there same thing with batman arkham city it was something that you had to go and google to see how to get it to run so that it boots up on the system and those are little minor inconveniences but as someone coming over from the console side of things where you simply just put in a disc or you put in a cartridge and everything works it was a bit frustrating i felt i do love all the options that you get with this system as far as customizing your experience once you get into the game but it can be a bit frustrating and a bit of a turnoff when you try to boot up a game and you have to go through hoops in order just to get the game to run but overall all those things aside I love this thing. I think the Steam Deck is a fantastic piece of machinery. I absolutely love playing games on it. And the library on there, because of the Steam Store, is just incredible. Like, it's incredible to be playing Spider-Man on a Steam Deck, on a, on a handheld device and it runs and looks so good it's really going to sort of open up my options i feel i'm not a pc gamer by any stretch of the imagination but with this it, it sort of negates some of the stuff that comes along with pc of course there's the dock coming out for it soon so that you can dock it to your television and play your games on your television that's the official dock there are ways to do it now you can put bluetooth controllers on here it's essentially a mini pc now with that you do get some of the problems that come with pc gaming but Overall, I definitely love this system. Is it going to replace my Nintendo Switch? No, it's just another complimentary thing. It is another way for me to play video games. So let me know in the comments section down below if you have picked up a Steam Deck or you plan on picking up a Steam Deck. If this video sort of persuaded you, I think right now the wait times are over for it. You order it and you get it like a week or two later. And I definitely think it's a, it's a fun system, man. I'm definitely enjoying my time with it. And as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you are new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button, like, comment, and share. Hit that bell notification as well. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next video. Later.